Hello my friends and welcome to the fifth episode of the Zen Gem series. In this class I'm going to teach you how to shade in all of the gems for our practice page. So I'm going to break this down for you step by step so that you can learn how to make a successful and realistic looking gem. So let's get started. To begin working on the gems, you need to choose a set of colors. So select one of your color scales that you completed from the practice above. Organize your pencils so that they go from dark to medium to light before you begin. The first step is to take one of your lightest colors and you're going to create the same shape as the exterior shape, but just smaller and up towards the top edge of your shape. So we're outlining just a smaller version of that oval. And once we've done that, we're gonna go through and just block out a few little sections that will remain white. So we're going to leave a few little circles for highlights and then a couple of elongated teardrop shapes. I'm going to take my darkest color from my color scale set, and I'm going to fill in that darkest value around that oval that we drew out for ourselves. So I'm making sure I'm not filling in any of my highlights on accident, and I'm making sure that the width of this value is not even all the way around. It should only fall along the outside edges of that oval that we drew for our highlights. Once I've filled in a crescent moon shape with that darkest value, I'm going to go all the way around the edge of that value and I'm going to help it fade into the white. So essentially I'm making just a very small value scale here, fading from the dark to medium all the way out to white. To continue, we're going to take the color that was directly next to our darkest color in our color scale. So for me, this was red. So I'm going to take that next color and I'm going to varnish over the entire section that I just filled in with my darkest value. I'm going to varnish all the way out into that space where I was fading my darkest value like a value scale. So I'm trying to essentially help those colors blend together. As I reached those sections I laid out for the highlights, I, I made sure that I wasn't filling in that space at all and I was trying to keep those edges nice and crisp. So I took that main color and continued filling in a solid section of that red so that you could see it separately from my darker color behind it. And once I filled in that solid red, I'm going to go all the way around that outside edge to make sure that it's varnished all the way around and up, up against that oval that we created. Then I created a small value scale just up against that edge where I had varnished with that solid color and I'm trying to make it blend out until it gets all the way to white. So we want to have a nice smooth transition because when we lay this out correctly, that's when it's going to blend the smoothest with our lighter color when we go over the top of it. So making sure that this step is done really well and that you don't have any sections of value or any lines that show up is really important to make sure this is a smooth transition. Now we're going to grab our next lightest pencil. We're going to varnish over the top of any layers that were added lightly from our color before. And then we're going to continue making another small value scale so that this lighter color fades into the center. So as you can see, this is really a pattern where we're taking our darker color and varnishing and then fading out. Then we're taking our next lightest color, going over the top of it and varnishing in that lighter area and then fading out again. So it's really just a consistent pattern that you'll keep repeating all the way through until you get to your lightest color. When you've worked your way to your lightest color, it's really important to go back through and make sure that you don't have any dark smudges or lines or sections of value that's showing before you add this light layer on top. Because if you do have any lines or sections of value, when you go over the top with your lighter color, it's going to show very clearly. So just make sure that you're doing your best to keep it nice and smooth as you're working. And the final step is to just go back through and add any of those final darker shadows to make it have a nice full range of values. The final step to create this gem is to take a freshly sharpened pencil to take that point 
and make sure it's a dark color so it'll actually show up against your gem and you're just going to trail it and kind of twist it let it kind of bump around so that you get a nice variety of thickness in your line what you want to avoid is the same thickness or just like perfectly even lines going through these because that looks a little too designed we want to make this look a bit random with the way that we've got some parts of the line that are thicker and some parts that are thinner and also just kind of a twisting shape to the line as well I'd like to show you one more example of coloring in these gems and with this example my highlight is not going to be off to the side like it was for the first example I'm actually placing it right near the middle so I framed it just perfectly that border edge is the same all the way around now I did that with my lightest colored pencil so that I wouldn't have these lines showing as I continued and I'm just going through and trying to add in some long sections of highlights and then I'm also going to try to add some shorter little rounded sections of highlights. So I'm just going through and kind of placing those where I would like them to be before I come in with my darkest value. So I'll begin by shading with my darkest value around the outside edges. And with this one, since the highlight is closer to the center of the gem, I'm going to try to keep that all up near the top and kind of have it taper near the bottom center. So I'm just going to fill in and varnish with my darkest color. And then I'm going to continue and fade that out as I work. Then I'm going to take my second darkest color and I'm going to varnish over the top of any area that I had faded out and I'm just trying to help those colors blend together. So I'm making sure that I'm pressing hard enough to varnish over the top of that area that I colored like a value scale with my darker color. I went around those highlighted shapes very carefully to make sure that they have a nice crisp outline. We really don't want them to be sort of fuzzy and soft looking because of the way that you shaded. So make sure that you're keeping it nice and crisp up against those white sections. The next step is to fade this color so that we are fading out into white to make a nice smooth transition when we varnish with our lighter color over the top of this. As you can see here, I'm just working with my next lightest color, trying to fill in this space and make it nice and smooth before I varnish over the top. Once your transitions are nice and smooth, that's when you can take your lightest color and varnish over the top to make it look like that area is illuminated or glowing slightly. You can even choose to go over the top of your lightest area with a white colored pencil. This can be a really great way to help some colors transition together a little bit smoother if you're having a hard time. And this also can make it look a little bit brighter, like it's shining a bit more. So adding a layer of white right on top of your lightest section can be a really beneficial thing. And again, the last step is to draw the cracks that go in this gem. So we're going to take a sharpened dark colored pencil and we're going to just kind of trail it across this shape, trying to kind of twist our pencil to get some areas that are thick for our lines and some areas that are thin. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. I hope that it was helpful and that you learned a lot and I'll see you soon for our next episode.